actually, uh, I found out just last night this, uh, this whole thing has, this whole thing with a funny foreign language has something to do with efficient speaking and I only get six minutes, so don't need most of that. <laughs> All right. You know, the last, uh, I normally plan on printing off and modifying a boilerplate speech that I give to a rotary club and saving myself some work, but lo and behold, the last time I opened my computer, I could find nothing that would fit. The last time I gave a big speech, we had a different premier. In fact, we had two different premiers since the last time I spoke. Well, what was her name? I can't find a single person in the entire government that remembers her name, let alone knew her. Like Trotsky after the first great purge, her face has been photoshopped out of all pictures and her face and name wiped from all documents and references. She who must not be named has been collect collectively wiped from the record of the progressive conservatives. But just as the Mayans left pyramids and other signs behind them to remind the world that they once existed, the ancient civilization of the Redfordites has left an extensive trail of artifacts in their wake. <laughs> Try as Jim Prentice may, this evidence is impossible to not see unless you deliberately close your eyes. Driving down the highway to Edmonton, you can still see the ruins of this once great civilization with massive 8 by 4 building Alberta billboards with the haunting signature of Premier Allison Redford emblazoned across them. When a political archaeologist gets to Edmonton, more monuments to this long-lost civilization abound. The Sky Palace stands menacingly over the legislature grounds, casting a shadow that does not set with the sun, but provides a cloud of darkness that will just not go away. The tale of the Sky Palace's alleged demise says a lot about attempts by the latter peoples of the AP after Prentice period. Days after the renegade, who has nothing at all to do with the PC party or the government of Alberta resigned, the CBC was about one hour away from releasing documents which would bring to public attention the penthouse of imprudence for all to see. Fearing that the unwashed masses were about to storm the legislature to tar and feather Premier Hancock and the rest of cabinet, who had absolutely no knowledge of the apartment of apostasy, the government invited the media to come and view the site of the crime for themselves. The infrastructure minister at the time, Rick McIver, promised that the entire thing had been scrapped even before the Dark One resigned, and he showed everyone documents claiming that the entire overweight ordeal had cost taxpayers a paltry $150,000. As it turns out, the Sky Palace was never actually cancelled. According to the Auditor General, only the residential furniture that was to ordain the Palace of Plenty was exchanged for executive office furniture so that the overlords of excess could have a nice place to meet to discuss how to spend our $47 billion budget. Fast forward two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, when archaeologists released the fossils found on a dig through Freedom of Information documents, showing that upgrades to the Sky Palace actually pushed upwards of $2 million. Included in these modest upgrades were $43,000 for stone and porcelain, wall and floor tiles, and $46,000 for draperies. The government's new infrastructure minister, Mammy Bueller, rebutted these claims with facts that they cost only $240,000. If you're keeping track, that is still 40% higher than the government's original claim. I suppose such sums of money are a trifle for the caliphs of consumption. But even if the government's second guesstimate of the Sky Palace bill was correct, and the opposition's not, it does leave one wondering why they didn't release this information for themselves. If they knew that the cost was $240,000, why not tell us to begin with? Why wait for others to release the information? Not telling us how much things cost is perhaps the greatest ruin left in the rake, wake of the Redford civilization. I won't dwell on the details here, but you'll probably recall that two years ago, the government tore up our budget reporting standards and instead dropped all of the money into three separate buckets. It was a budget of three for one, but not all for three, with none of the budget's constituent parts adding up with one another. In short, borrowed money counts as revenue now, and a deficit is no longer defined as a government that spends more money than it brings in. The PCs repealed the Fiscal Responsibility Act, allowing them to run deficits and borrow money almost without limit. The PCs repealed the Government Accountability Act, allowing them to provide drastically less financial reporting information to Albertans, including the requirement that a, of a de detailed balance sheet every three months. As of 7.30 p.m. tonight, 
Alberta's debt stands at $11 billion, $491,432.22. That number will hit $21 billion by 2016. Mr. Prentice has simultaneously promised to pay down the debt, increase spending, and continue to borrow to finance the government. I've yet to figure out how they plan to do all of this while making the budget clear and understandable again. The government tells us every day they want to turn the page and move on and not focus on the negative anymore. Now, of course they would. So does the child who gets caught stealing from the cookie jar. 85% of the new cabinet is actually recycled material from Redford's government. It shouldn't surprise us that those people who were there knew what was happening and did nothing want to move on. The PCs called digging up their malfeasance, waste and thievery, mudslinging. I disagree. This is government mudslinging at Albertans and taxpayers. Albertans do want to move on, but they want accountability from the people that stole from them. Sorry just doesn't cut it anymore. Redford did it doesn't cut it anymore. If the PCs are to have any leg to stand on in claiming that justice was done without them being turfed out on their ass, then they need to do more than pass the buck and tell us to stop being negative. They need to call a proper inquiry to get to the bottom of what was done in their name. In short, they need accountability. They need to throw everyone overboard who had their fingerprints on this mess. And they need to pay back every red cent that was wasted, squandered, hidden, or stolen. Let's not fool ourselves that everything is all right again in Tory land just because they changed the guy at the top. Their hands are still in the cookie jar, and until they wipe the smear of chocolate off their face, I won't believe that justice and accountability has been done. Thanks.